Hi, today we're at RSPB Snettisham in Norfolk and I've come here for the high tide wader roost. It's actually the second time in a week that I've come. I came about six days ago for the evening roost or high tide. It's about four or five o'clock in, in the afternoon. Today I've come for the early morning high tide which was eight o'clock in the morning. So I got here about 6.30 which meant leaving home about 3.30, it's a three hour drive and it's quite a long walk in to get to the, the spot where you tend to watch the waders. It's about a, a mile and a half from the RSBB car park, which is a pay and display car park. There's also a beach car park, which is pay and display. And so it's a fair, fair walk, a three mile walk here and, and back again. The main problem with these high tide roosts is you don't get a really good high tide very often. Now on the internet, if you search for RSPB Snettersham, you will come up with the tide timetable. The RSPB actually produce it this year, 2020, it was a PDF file. Presumably they'll do the same for next year, but there's a limited number of days each year when the tide comes in far enough to push all the waders into the pits just behind the beach. But well, this is one of those days, but you do have to get here very early. You don't get the place to yourself. There'll be roughly about 200 other people here come to see it. It is one of Britain's wildlife spectaculars. So this is at the end of the session now. I've already been filming it this morning. I've finished, I'm about to leave. I'm doing the, uh, the bit to camera as I'm leaving, but uh, I'll show you what I filmed earlier on. I'll start off with the footage I took on the afternoon visit and then move on to this morning's work. On both occasions it was rather grey and overcast. When you first arrive in the car park you don't have to worry about which direction to walk into or where is the best place to stand because there'll be one or two other people there you can follow. It's a very popular event. The big swarms of birds are mostly made up of the wader called knot but there's a variety of birds out there curlews and godwits and oyster catchers shell ducks and geese but they're not they swarm just like starlings do when they go into their roosts so it is a spectacular sight and it's probably the best view you get of this anywhere in the country there's other places where they gather in these sort of numbers but they come particularly close to you here and it is just wonderful to see apparently there's about a hundred thousand not out there The slow motion footage is taken with the Panasonic G9 at 180 frames per second and there's also some standard speed as well. I enjoyed the afternoon visit more than the morning trip simply because towards the end of it the sun did start to poke through the sky and then your footage is backlit, you're looking to the west and into the setting sun and there it's raining at the same time as the sun was shining, you can see the rain falling amongst the birds. The sensible wildlife photographer would have a waterproof coat and a rain sleeve over his lens, I had neither. So by the end of this session I was very wet and then you get very cold. But you don't have to worry about lenses these days. The Micro Four Third lenses for Olympus or Panasonic are very water resistant. It would have been nice to have had some nice sunlight in the morning session as well. But I didn't get it. So now we've moved on to this morning session. These are pink-footed geese which have roosted out on the marsh. And there's just as many people there as there are for the afternoon visit.
as well as having the rain to contend with it was quite windy and in some of the footage you can see the camera is shaking because the wind is knocking the camera you can fix this in post-production but I've just left this little clip in just to illustrate it I put the lens hood in so it wasn't protruding out so far trying to reduce the sort of sail effect on the lens but really you need a much heavier tripod than I was carrying but slowly the birds are pushed to a smaller and smaller areas of mud they're either flying or walking and then they move into the pits at the back of the beach the pits have got several hides around them and notice in Knott's Landing hide those low apertures those are for photographers to be able to get down low this is a new hide and it's unusual to have one built with photographers in mind photographers can get down onto the floor getting that lower level shot the bird watchers can sit on these steps and look out of these huge windows at the waders gathering on the other side of the pit oyster catchers are not in huge numbers because we're in the coronavirus situation at the moment the hides are restricted on how many people we can get in there so I wasn't able to do any photography from the hides so that will have to wait for another day. Thanks for watching.